What's a man like yourself doing out in these parts? I came here to see an old friend. How many folks live out here? Suppose I might know him. Flint? Flint Rasco? I don't know him. I don't believe that. Do you happen to know of his whereabouts? Like I said, I ain't talking. Butch, my name is Kelvin. Does this name resonate with you? So you are aware of my relationship with Flint? I'm aware. What are you aware of? I'm aware of you two hunted bounties after leaving that gang. Do you know the reason as to why we left that gang? Something to do with his father and brother. Don't know nothing else. It's from Flint. Says he's in tall trees. Now, due to circumstances, I'm here trying to help him. Look, I know who you are, Calvin, but I cannot disrespect Flint's wishes. I'm truly sorry. Now, you're correct in assuming that Flint has no intention of seeing me. However, I have a dire intention to see him. I promise you, once he realizes why I'm here, he'll be appreciative of my abrupt presence. I'm just worried Flint will get mad. He won't. Butch, if you don't comply, our friend will be in grave danger. Now, I'm assuming you're aware of Flint's vile brother, Gideon. And you're familiar with the incident. Briefly. What if I told you Gideon wasn't dead? He would want to know. Precisely. I'm obligated to help him. And it's best for all parties involved that I be the first to find him. About five miles east, he lives outside a barn down by a little creek. I greatly appreciate this, Butch. Now I better be on my way so you can get back to your work.
Reading Mary. How are you, Flint? Doing mighty fine. How about yourself? I'm fine. Is Butch around? I got something for him. No, he's out. Need any help around the shop? Oh, I'll manage. Why don't you just have a seat? Butch will be here any second. Sounds good. Flint, how are you? Can I get you something to drink? You know me too well. Of course I'd like a drink. Mary, could you bring down some of that whiskey for Flint and I? A little early for whiskey, don't you think? I suppose you're right, darling. Time of day don't matter much to Flint, though. Sure don't. Here. Thought you might need this. No, no, you should keep that. I already got one. It's not whiskey, but it'll keep you cool. Thanks, darling. Thanks, Mary. Take it, Butch. You can't keep carrying around this bulky shotgun all the time, and it's the least I can do. Who'd you have to kill to get this? Remember that little kid I was telling you about a couple weeks ago? Don't tell me you killed him, Flint. <laughs> Hell no, I just took his firearm. Well, that's awfully rude. Well, gave him some food. Besides, a kid that age don't need a firearm like that. No one say that's a fair deal. Well, we both got something we needed. Hey Mary, mind giving me some whiskey for my travels? I'm afraid you won't make it home if I do. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Anytime. Be careful with that gun, Bush. Always a pleasure, Mary. Here you go, honey. You travel safe now. Bye any time. I'm feeling a bit balmy. Mind if I head home? Go get some rest. Try to make it home for supper. I'm making jerky gravy, lemon pie for dessert. That sounds wonderful, darling. I'll be home later. This son of a bitch smacked me with a liquor bottle. There you go. Quite the chase trying to come find you. Check his bag. By the double barrel jump of Jiminy, look what we have ourselves here. You know, Calvin, you're a slippery little bastard. I'm not going to tell you where Flint is. You will tell me what Flint is, or Gideon will make you spit it out. <laughs> Hell of a drink you must have had. Go. 
post, Ross. Teddy, can I ask you something? What? Why don't you find yourself a real job like I did? <laughs> Earn more than you ever will. Doubt that. Straws, go back. You sure? Yeah. Here. God damn it, Teddy. Worthless piece of shit. Flint! Are you there? Flint, it's Cal. Get your ass over here. What are you doing? Keep your voice down. Look, they're gone. A couple miles from here. I thought you were one of them sons of bitches. How'd they find me? Alright, let me explain. It was Gideon, wasn't it? Yes. Alright, look. It was a perfectly normal evening about three weeks ago. I was looking out of my window admiring the sunset, only to find Gideon and his men approaching my doorstep. Obstructing my perfect view, nonetheless. I couldn't believe my eyes, Flint. I thought I was looking at a ghost. I don't understand. He should be dead. What about my father? Put three bullets in his head. If he's still alive, we have much bigger problems at hand. I don't understand, Cal. They destroyed everything of mine. I took what I could and came here. How'd they find you? I have no idea. What'd you do when you saw them coming? I ran. I grabbed what was left of the bounty and ran. Where's the money? That miscreant Colt took it. He's gonna bring it for you, but he took it. How much money had you spent? Three thousand. And you? <laughs> well, I spent all mine. Followed you all the way here from Weston? They did. Now look, before you get all upset with me, you gotta understand, I have no idea how on God's green earth they found my location. That's why I came here. If they're willing to spend all that time searching for me, God knows what they would do to find you. You led them to me. Well, they had found the letters we've been writing to each why other. Why don't you burn those letters like we agreed? I'm sorry, but I bet Gideon is on his way to this county right now. If he's not here already, and as sure as that tree stands right there, Gideon will kill me the second he sees me. There's still time for you to leave. Luckily, Gideon don't care that much about you. Look, Flint, I came here to warn you. We have to leave, now. I appreciate all you're doing, I really do. But Gideon won't stop until I lie dead on that ground. Well, I hardly intend on leaving you after traveling all this way. God damn it, Cal. How many men are with him? Well, I've seen five. Killed Teddy. So yes, roughly five. Look, there's still time for you to leave. 
shit, I wouldn't blame you if you did. Well, Flint, I fully understand that, but I've made up my mind. We can't keep running. We're gonna have to face them sooner or later. Well, I'd suggest later. So right here certainly isn't an optimal location to settle your familial dispute. Goddamn piece of shit, Teddy. Got shot. Might as well just end his miserable life. Good for nothing. Teddy. Teddy. What the hell happened? I'm sorry, sir. It, it all happened. I, I didn't ask for an apology. I asked for an explanation. He shot me, sir. It all happened so fast. Goddamn wrong. How did that little bastard escape, Teddy? He took my gun. I cannot even imagine how much distress one would feel in your position. It hurts real bad, sir. I'm sure it does. Teddy here's hurting real bad right now, boys. Only question now is, what am I to do? Strauss, you grew up on a farm, right, son? Yes, sir, I did. When that little horse of yours gonna work no more, what did y'all do with it? Shot it dead. Shot it dead. Damn right. Right there where that good-for-nothing beast stood. But the question still remains. Should I put Teddy here out of his misery? Anybody gonna speak up? Hell yeah. Oh boy. What you think? I don't... I don't know, sir. I'm, he, he weren't no bad guy, I, I'm saying. So you don't think we should keep him around? I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I, he might slow us down a bit. Would he now? Teddy here is a good man. Always does what he's told. But that's not why I recruited him off the rails. Because I saw potential with this young man. Seeing him shoot that pistol for the first time, I knew that I could make something out of him. But just like Straw's old horse, if Teddy can't work, then he certainly cannot reach his full potential. Hook, you come here for a second. Me, sir? Is there some other bastard around here named Hook? Yes, you. Give me one reason, one, why I shouldn't put a bullet through Teddy's head. Well, he, he weren't, no, I, I don't know, sir. He, I. You don't know. All right. Take this pistol and put a bullet through Teddy's head. Are you sure? I... I just don't know. Do it. Go on. I don't know. I, I can't. God damn it. Gideon and I are the only ones who can get a job done, huh? It's ridiculous. 
God damn it, Hawk. Y'all sons of bitches becoming mighty comfortable with questioning my orders. And I've had about enough. You men knew my father very well. He built this gang with men who would kill another man just for looking at him the wrong way. But I stand here now and I feel like I'm looking at a bunch of goddamn schoolgirls. Things ain't any different with me in charge, boys. When I tell one of y'all to do something, you do it. Next man who doesn't is going to bowl it right between the eyes. And I won't hesitate. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Hulk? Yes, sir. Good. Uh, any one of you mud sales know what Calvin ran off to? Gideon, I'm almost certain Calvin's with your brother. Well then, we better be on our way. Get rid of the body. So you've been in this county the whole time? Listen, Cal, I ain't too interested in small talk. Do you really want to kill Gideon? I will have no choice. When the time comes, it's either shoot or be shot. We may not get a chance. We're hopelessly outgunned. Gideon's men are a bunch of musty, uneducated scoundrels. You've seen them shoot. They ain't all that intimidating. Well, they may not be intimidating. They may not even have an accurate shot. However, armed men who are not afraid to kill should not be underestimated. You're probably right. What happened that day was between Gideon, my father, and I. Now, I ain't saying he doesn't hate you. He definitely does. But he's here for me, specifically for me. The rest of those men are just along for the ride. If you say so. Do you have any remorse? For what you did? My mother spent her entire life trying to stop me and Gideon from following in her father's footsteps. And he killed her for it. It had to be done. I suppose. I found your brother Calvin, sir. Been looking all day. Cole and I ain't find shit either. Must have left the county. Where the hell is Huck? It's up ahead, scouting out the area. <laughs> I suppose Huck is trying to make amends for his stupidity earlier. Gideon, we ain't checked that one tavern a couple miles away. So? That's where Calvin was last before he ran off. Son of a bitch shop owner probably knows Flint. 
of all the stupid shit you've done said, Freddy. Colt, calm yourself. Why the hell didn't he say nothing? We've been searching all day. I understand that. In fact, I'm exhausted too. And you're right. Most days I would be appalled by your stupidity, Freddy. Goddamn right. We've had enough anger amongst ourselves today. Teddy's body line a few miles back certainly confirms that, as I'm sure you two agree. That money over there. Could have been earned from the corpses. Any number of men. To me though, to me only one man. One man. Let's kill for that money. Warren Rascal. That son of a bitch Flint killed my father. Our father. For that. He's running now because he knows just how unforgivable the crime that he has committed really is. You don't gotta remind us, sir. I know that, Colt. And I promise you boys this. Each step that we take towards that shop is a step closer to Flint's day of reckoning. And make no mistake. The hands of justice will strike. And they will be swift. And in that moment, Flint will understand the pain that he has caused each and every one of us. He murdered in cold blood. And as far as I'm concerned, can't go unpunished. Not when it's my father. Let's go get that bastard. Let's get him. We'll leave tomorrow. Butch, glad you could join us. Take a seat, get comfortable. This is your place after all. Colt, would you mind grabbing me and my new friend Butch here a drink? Anything specific? I'm fine. I said no. Well, I'm pouring more drink. You don't drink? Only on special occasions. Well, in my eyes, this is a special occasion. Well, in my eyes, it ain't. Butch, do you happen to know who I am? I do. And who is that? You're Gideon Rasco, leader of that gang of hooligans. And what is the name of this so-called gang of hooligans? Rasco Gang. Indeed. What's your wife's name? Don't hurt her. Don't fry it. Ain't nothing gonna happen to your pretty little lady as long as you tell me what I need to know. What is her name? My name is Mary. Well, hello. What do you want? I'm here in the small county of tall trees because I'm wondering if you Happen to know of a man named Flint Rasco. I mean, and I assume he is with Calvin. 
The reason why I have intruded into your tavern today is because it is the only place within 15 miles where a man can get a drink. And my brother Flint, well, he drinks a lot. Besides, rumor has it you two are mighty good friends. No, sir. Don't know the man. You've never seen these men at all? No, sir. No one meet Butch. Would you take me as a man who likes being lied to? Wouldn't think so. Correct. So, you, you wouldn't be lying to me now, would you? No, sir. Let me ask that question again. Do you know my brother Flint? Sometime. What was that? He stops by occasionally. I thought so. Do you happen to know of his whereabouts? No, sir. I'm assuming for some odd reason you think it's okay to lie to an ace high man like myself. You calling me a liar? Let's just say, preferably, I'd rather not waste bullets on you and your lovely wife. Colt, you still got that shiny knife of yours, don't you? Sure do. Good. Good. I'm sorry, I did not introduce you to. Butch, this is my most trusted friend, Colt. Colt here is exceptionally trained with a Colt. Hence the name. A couple of years ago, he solely defended our man from eight lamen. Ain't that right? Ten lamen. Let's not get too boastful now. <laughs> Butch, I have traveled a long way to put a bullet in Flint's head. And you, a shop owner son of a bitch, ain't gonna stop me from doing so. Now, like I said, I'd rather not waste a fine bullet on an exceptionally fine man. But as Colt has confirmed, his knife is still alive and well. I swear I've got no knowledge of his location. You can either tell me where Flint is right now. My boy Colt here will slice your wife's head clean out for goddamn Stop, souls. please. Do you understand? It's about five miles east. Lives outside a barn. <clears throat> is that a bluff? Or do you mean it for real play? It's the truth. If it ain't, I will come back here, kill you and your wife, and burn the stamp tavern to the ground. I swear. Release her. I apologize, Mary. Would prefer for this discussion not to reach that level of intensity. Butch, I'm gonna leave one of my men to watch after you and your wife. You treat him well, get him a whiskey and such, and after I'm done taking care of my business, I'll come back here, get my boy, and leave. We won't ever come back here again. Is that alright with the both of y'all? Yes. Mary? He'll be treated as a guest. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Ready, boy. Why don't you come in here and keep this happy couple company? Behave yourself now. I expect a quiet couple of days out of this household. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You two have a lovely day.
But if it ain't my long lost brother Flint. Afternoon, Calvin. Afternoon. That's a mighty cold stare. You got something on your mind? Ain't got nothing to say. Put that goddamn pistol away before you get yourself hurt, Flint. I always gotta pick a fight, don't you? We aren't the ones who traveled miles and miles to kill. Oh, but you were. You traveled across the country to put a bullet in our father's head for a bag of money and unjustified revenge. Unjustified? Our mother is dead, Gideon. Shot dead by a son of a bitch father. Don't you dare speak his name! Gentlemen, I don't mean to interrupt, but this discussion hardly seems constructive. Not now, Cal. I'm sure we can settle this dispute in a more decent manner. No, 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 no. The time for a peaceful resolution is long gone. As is my patience. Well, we are correct in saying that we are not accomplishing a thing with these petty arguments. Father raises a gentleman. And this ought to be handled as such. Just like they used to. A duel, if you will. Well, that takes honor from both sides. Why the hell would I trust you? You have my word. Besides, it's the only option you two got. So be it. All right, boys, listen here. A duel takes place between two men and two men alone. Today will be me and my brother Flint. Only one of us is gonna make it out alive. And that is how a duel works. It is the true gentleman's way to resolve a conflict. And no matter what happens, I expect y'all to uphold our honor, despite the fact that my bastard of a brother certainly does not have it. All this talk of honor and accusing us of not having any, I sure hope you can respect the rules. Like I said, you have my word. Well, then you'll have no problem with your associates and I relieving ourselves of our weapons? Not at all. Boys, put your pistols in a pile over here. Won't be needing them anyhow. Seven paces. As you wish. Let's begin.
burn, son of a bitch! This is all you're doing. You abandoned our family. You yellow belly bastard! But that wasn't enough for you, was it? No. You had to come back and rip us all apart, too. Our father lies dead because of you! Warner manipulated us. We grew up thinking he was a god. It wasn't until he shot Ma that I saw the truth. I know you loved her. I wish you would have come with me. He, he had to kill a flint. She couldn't be trusted. That woman endeared years and years of hell on earth for us. You know that ain't true. You killed your own family for money. Killing our father was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I knew there would be no compromise between two justified men. If you shot me, it would haunt you for the rest of time. Well... <laughs> Looks like the hands of justice found their victim. Seems that way. Tell Mary to say hello.